Welcome to NYP Music Theory. In this video, our focus is harmonic analysis from Robert Schumann's Un Choral, number four from his album For the Young. What would you learn from this video? First of all, analysis of every chord in this SATB Choral with extended Roman numerals. Number two, phrase modulation and pivot chord. Number three, Review some of the foundations of four-part writing. Number four, cadences, 5-1, 1-5, and a very seldom use 1-4, passing 6-3, and usage of 2-7 and 5-7 chord. This piece is suitable for grade 5 piano students to learn how to play four-part songs or hymns. With a knowledge of harmonic vocabulary in grade 6 music theory, this will enhance us to play with understanding. Let's start with listening. Let's look at the chord progressions. This is in G major. Bar 1 and bar 2 is a simple 1, 5B, 1, and 5B. In bar 3 and bar 4, we observe there is a C sharp, which is not found in G major. We can look at the fermata, which is the end of the phrase. We can assume that this is in D major, because D major is the dominant key of G major. And in D major, we have a C sharp. So once we confirm this is in D major 5, A C sharp E goes to 1, then we can work backwards to analyze these two chords. It's a 5, 7, C to 1, still in D major. We continue to move backwards. So this D major chord will be the pivot chord. That means common to the old key and the new key. G major, this is a 5, B, but in D major, this is 1, B. So it acts as a pivot chord. Usually, after the pivot chord, we will continue the chord progression and write it on the second line. After the first phrase, we move on and analyze this EGB chord is the 2 in D major. But at the same time, it can be a G major 6. And we confirm this modulation back to G major because there is no more C sharp here. So according to the Roman numerals, it is 6, 5, 1, 4B, 1C, 5, 1. We have learned that 1C is a declaration of 5. It is very common at the end of a phrase. So both phrases end on 5, 1. But the first phrase has a transient modulation. Transient modulation means very short. Only exists for two bars and then back to the original key. Here we have a C, but we can take this as a passing note in the 5 chord, D, F sharp, A, and the C as a passing note. We can look into this 6 chord in G, also act as a pivot chord. D major 2 is equivalent to G major 6, so it acts as a pivot chord and going back to G major. This is bar 17. We can see there are two times using a passing 6-3. We can also observe the doubling of the third, which is not very often, and we are not encouraged during the exam. But since this is composed by Schumann, and he made it an exceptional case, it looks like a parallel or consecutive here between the soprano and alto. 
But if you look at the F, this is an F sharp according to the key signature. So a perfect fifth go to diminished fifth, or a diminished fifth go to perfect fifth, it doesn't count as consecutives. Look at here is the example of using 2-7. According to the rules, the seventh note of the 2-7 chord should be prepared by the previous chord. So this is a G from GBD chord and continue in the same voice and resolve downwards by step. Towards the end of this phrase, we can find a climax over here. That is the highest note. In bar 25, we observe a passing note in soprano and also in the bass. So the chord progressions are still very simple. 1, 1, B, 4, 1, 4, 7, B, 2, 1. And this is very special to have two fermatas. The first one is just to hold on to a G chord. It looks like the end of the phrase, but actually it's not finished yet. We can see the four chord over here. This is very seldom and it does not end on 1, 5, but 1, 4. And finally, it's also a very typical cadential progression, 2B, 5, 7, 1. I hope you can enjoy this analysis and have a brief revision of grade 6 harmonic analysis. Thanks for watching. If you find the video helpful, please like, share, and comment below. See you next time.